Hiya, and welcome back to Psychic Connections. The game that teaches us that... We try to save the best for last. But clearly we didn't do that, because we did Elliot first. And is, is my audio shit? My audio bad? There we go, that, that should be better, that should be better. Anyways, let's just hop right in. And it's, uh... Shit. Is it... Not that. Uh... You would think... No, I don't want to overwrite my save. You would think that I'd know how to do this by now, but I don't. There we go. <laughs> uh, head back to the school, and we're, we're just going to be holding down control a lot. It's going to be a lot of holding down control. You know it's bad when I'm heavily underpowered. Yeah, we're going to stay out here with Aiden. Sounds good. I'll keep the rabbit on task then. Yeah, we're speed running. We're already speed running. Zoe moves on ahead while, while I turn to Aiden, who grumbles while looking at his watch. You know, watching the clock like that is just bound to make time pass slower. Truly an astute observation. But there isn't much else we can do other than make small talk. Well, we could go in with them. Aiden scoffs at the notion. He turns his head and begins looking around as if scanning the building's foundation. I don't think I'd very much find anything to my liking in such an... Establishment. That's true, they probably don't have any caviar in there. I'd be surprised if they had anything resembling real meat in there, let alone caviar. It's all likely sodas and fat-enriched snacks, processed without an ounce of care put into them. Okay, fancy mc- fancy pants, and you and your fancy fucking fanciness. I didn't take you for a health nut. Well, it's important to me one's health. Especially if you intend to live a long and fulfilling life. <laughs> For example, if you keep eating foods like those donuts from the fair, you may find yourself in an early grave. And? That seems a little far-fetched. The occasional dessert or treat wouldn't kill anyone. That's true, as so long as it's truly just on occasion. There isn't much to fear so long as you watch your intake. Aiden, 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 Aiden. Answer me this. Would you rather... Aiden, would you rather live a short life, but it's so fucking happy and delicious, or live a long life that's sad? That's what I thought. Get in there and buy a bag of Cheetos. Exactly. Oh god, I had a whole existential thing in the server. As long as you watch your intake. I wasn't expecting to get into a dietary discussion with Aiden, but it seems like he actually cares about quite a great deal. Albeit, I'm not sure if I can agree, since not everyone has access to the best options. Sometimes you just take what you can get. Since we're on the topic of food, I did have a question about his empathetic abilities. So, when we went to the culinary table the other day, was it because you could feel I was hungry? Not particularly. I had only noticed you were uncomfortable, yet from all the fucking cults. It seemed like you didn't really want to be there, though. So I thought it would be best to take you one of the more enjoyable tables. Hiya. Aiden will not stop me from fucking up a bag of chips at Mach 5, right? Um, Amethyst, that is not good. Seriously, dude. I'm I'm actually starting to get very concerned. I am I am starting to be get very concerned about you. So how does it work exactly? Is there like a big sign over my head that says happy or sad? That's bit more difficult to explain. I suppose it's similar to how you feel your own emotions. It's like people emit this emotional residue that my brain seems to just catch. Which is why it's difficult to be around people with intense emotions, like Jude. 
Additionally, it's why I do my best to not needlessly place myself in crowds. Is there something wrong with being in a crowd? How to explain it in a way that makes sense? Imagine walking down the street and everyone around you was playing their music for everyone to hear. How would that make you feel? Hmm, that particular scenario would probably be pretty distracting. It's not like I'd be able to focus on a single song easily. If his brain was catching all that interference from other people, I imagine it'd be a bit disorienting. If it's like that, I I'm impressed you were so composed yesterday. If I were younger, I might have been overwhelmed. However, I've been coping with this all my life. While you were taking... While you were taking to our secret fairly well, I want to reassure you that, with time, it'll almost seem natural to you. I certainly hope so. While I've certainly been warming up to the idea, it all still feels foreign to me. A small part of me is still expecting this to be a lucid dream. However, I know I won't be waking up anytime soon. The wolf turns to his expensive-looking wristwatch and begins tapping his foot. Honestly, though, where are they? Quinn has to be in class in the next 30 minutes. As if right on cue, Quinn and Zoe exit the small store, a couple small bags of various snacks in hand. Hey, Aiden. Hey, Aiden. Shut the hell up. I decided to text Aiden. I feel like he might be good for some conversation right now. Though I could be wrong, his text did seem to give off the vibe that he could be busy. Only one way to find out. Hey, what are you up to? I'm reading a book. Why do you ask? No reason, just thought we could maybe talk. I see. What was it you wished to talk about? You shouldn't be dying at all. That This is a good question. I hadn't really thought of a topic of conversation before starting this. I still can't get over how cute Mason is. Still can't get over how cute he is. I don't know. I guess I just wanted to talk with you. Interesting. Well, I'm afraid I'm not very versatile in open-ended conversation. What book are you reading? I imagine you haven't... It's about AI technology. Ew! 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 AI? Wait, 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 wait. It's AI in making vehicles. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. See, see, here's the thing, here's the thing. If you're using AI and manufacturing instead of trying to replace artists, then I think you're good. Like, uh, look at uh, Across the Spider-Verse, for example. I think they used AI to figure out a very specific thing. It was either Spider-Verse or Kung Fu Panda 4 that used AI for it and just looking at it it's like okay that is a good reason to be that is a good reason to use ai that's fine yeah yeah i'm totally fine with ai replacing extremely dangerous jobs yeah hiya I'm I'm totally fine with it. I'm I'm Gucci with it. Yeah. AI art. Fuck AI art and this might come off as aggressive and evil and rude, but fuck AI art and fuck the people who make it. Now. That said, I have actually fucked around with AI. Not chat GPT. I have not fucked around with ChatGPT, except to get a chocolate chip cookie recipe. That is literally the only reason I have used ChatGPT. To get a fucking cookie recipe. That's it. And I still haven't made those cookies. And I don't think I want to. 
No. I, I, I should. Um, I'm getting sidetracked, but real quick. Uh, the what you call it? Uh, what was it called? Uh, oh, TensorFlow. It is a Python library. I have used it to make a calculator, and it was absolute ass. That's it. And I'm done. Wow, I guess he really takes this whole business thing seriously. Though, I guess if you're inheriting a whole company, you have to be serious about it. It was ChatGPT. I asked ChatGPT for a cookie recipe. That is my shame. I am so sorry to... I am so sorry. Please forgive me. I do not wish to be excommunicated from society. Please forgive me. Sounds like a lot of work. Into the jar for AI crimes. No! No, please keep me out of the jar. It smells like piss and sadness. Indeed, I'm afraid it does not allow for many leisurely moments. However, I do make things to pursue things that arouse my interest. Do you have to pay for chat GPT? No, you don't. You don't. Um. Yeah, here, here. Just to hopefully absolve myself of all sins. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Let me adjust my laptop screen. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm grabbing my phone. I'm grabbing my phone. Let me turn on dark mode so that way you don't get flashbanged. Uh, where the fuck is it? Uh, right here. Display and brightness. Dark mode. Okay. I'm in dark mode. Okay. I'm in dark mode. No, fuck. Let me do this. Uh, yeah. I turned on dark mode. Now. I'm going to go to my notes app. Okay. Notes app. Scroll down. Right here. This is the cookie recipe. I'm going to click there and delete. See this? And delete. I have deleted the cookie recipe. Please forgive me for all sins. Please forgive me for my sins. I would greatly appreciate it. Let me turn back on light mode because I like light mode. Now Google that chocolate chip cookie recipe. Plug my fucking phone. Wrong charger. That's for my earbuds. Fucking phone charger, not earbud charger. And there we go. Why does my mind immediately go to the gutter with his use of the word arouse? You like staring directly into the sun at, and at high noon, don't you? Yes! I very much like destroying my eyeballs. What, like hobbies? I suppose you could call the following of political discussions a hobby. Though I personally feel like that. C, 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 C. Mason uses light mode. Mason uses light mode. I don't want to hear shit. Elliot probably uses light mode. I don't want to hear shit. <laughs> I didn't expect to have this kind of discussion with Aiden. Though I suppose it makes sense. A young business tycoon is probably more likely to follow politics. First time you've seen someone prefer light mode? I prefer light mode. It, it just looks better to me. Now that said, Streamlabs and Twitch on the Mac and on web browser... are in dark mode. Well, that was certainly an interesting conversation, even if it was cut a bit short. I learned a bit more about Aiden, too. Really, though, I should probably go to sleep. Yeah. We go to walk around campus, so that way we can get kidnapped by Aiden. Just kidding. We're not getting kidnapped here. Aiden eats books for breakfast. Om nom nom. Om nom nom. We're, we're speed running. We're speed running. 
What's my time? Uh, 15 minutes. Fuck. We're behind. We're, we're speed running. To the library. Gotta go fast. Yay! Oh, fuck you, Jude. Okay, but why is the CG hot? Seriously, seriously. Why why is he why why is the CG hot? No, no, let me go back. Let me go back. Further back. Right there. Right there. Why? Just why? They knew what they were doing. Yes. Yes. Enemies to lovers. Enemies to lovers. Now, Jude. 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 I don't think I'm allowed to say that. I don't think I'm allowed to say that. I'm here with him now, and I want to hear his side of things, assuming he'll even be willing to share after all of that. I walk over to the ashamed wolf in time to hear the librarian chastising him. Oh, I gotta come up with a voice. And you know what? I'm, I'm just gonna put it in the server. I'm gonna put it in the server. I'm going to put it in the server. If you weren't such a model student, I'd have thrown you out of this library and suspended you from using our facilities. I'd better not see or hear you making another disturbance like that ever again. Of course, sir. My apologies. <laughs> Aiden catches my gaze and immediately turns away with his books in hand, his tail tucked between his legs. Wait, Aiden, just hold up for a second. You can't just not tell me what that was all about. He stops and lets out a pained sigh. He sets down the stack of books and turns back towards me. First, I want to apologize again for such a shameful display. It's just the effect Jude tends to have on me. I mean, I'd probably get heated if somebody was yelling at me too, psychic or not. I don't care about that though, I care about what caused the fight in the first place. Then I propose we take a seat. It's not a particularly long story, but I can imagine you'll have questions at some point. I take a seat and wait for the wolf to proceed with his explanation. He sits there silently in thought, collecting himself before beginning. So, to preface this, I need to explain Jude's situation. He currently lives with his mother and works two jobs to support her, for whatever reason she hasn't been able to find work. I can imagine that it's the result of years of poor decision making. Regardless, the reason we formed our group was to help one another with our issues. So naturally, when the opportunity presented itself, I inquired with Mrs. Noel and said I'd look into finding her a job that's it that is it then why was jude so angry pride jude doesn't accept help from anyone if he can help it he's been that way for as long as i've known him though it doesn't help that he and i have always been on the wrong foot we're simply two very different people still different or not i can't figure out what was so bad about what aiden did sure it's a little weird that he was talking to jude's mom but as far as i can tell he didn't do anything particularly wrong anyway if you don't have any further questions, I really need to get to another class. Oh, of course, don't let me keep you. I wouldn't, but thank you. Checking up on me was unnecessary, but I still appreciate it. While we're still talking, what are your plans for tomorrow? Why do you ask? I was thinking it might be a good idea for the two of us to meet here and do some research with these books. So, you, me, and Zoe? No, she's busy tomorrow with additional duties. It would just be the two of us. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Sounds lovely, or I'll pass. How badly do we want to piss off Aiden? Rather, how badly do we want to piss off Amethyst? I don't know the rest of the lyrics. Hang on. Let me, uh... Hang on, let me... Let me put what I was going to say.
You know what? You know what? You know what? Yeah, we got her. Delightful. I'll reach out to you later tonight to confirm the best time. This sounds like a plan. Indeed, but for now, I must be off. I wave Aiden goodbye as he exits the library. He looks back and smiles before leaving me alone to my lonesome. He seems especially gung-ho about getting this assignment done early. If only I had the same amount of drive in my own work. R.I.P. Quinn's phone. Oh shit, Quinn. Yeah, we promise. We're always going to promise him, because we love him. Let him sleep. We're, we're, we're just speedrunning at this point. We're, we're just going to speedrun. I know we had plans to study together in the library, but I'm afraid I'll be tied up here for about an hour. That's no problem. I have something I need to take care of anyway. Specifically, a black-eyed bunny that's likely still sitting in my room. Aiden cocks an eyebrow in what I can assume is curiosity. I suddenly feel a rush of nerves at the realization that Aiden can feel what I'm feeling. Will he be able to detect my stress? How exactly could I even hide that something major like this is going on? Well, whatever it is, I can feel that it must be important. I'll text you when I'm done here and we can meet when you're available. It sounds perfect. I'll see you later then. I give Aiden a small nod before proceeding on a short journey back to my dorm room. Oh, hi, Quinn. Sorry, Quinn. I'll be right back. After briefly texting Aiden, I began my quick trek to the library. Hopefully, he'd be ready when I got there. While we're working on this assignment, maybe I can figure out how to fix things between him and Jude. I still can't believe I'm putting in this much work for something that isn't due for another couple of months. Entering the calming atmosphere of the library, I find myself a nice seat to relax in and wait for Aiden. Oh god, I didn't turn my ringer off. Hello? Looking around, I see a couple of students staring daggers at me like I'd committed some library cardinal sin. Mason, I'm glad I reached you. I'm on my way to the library as we speak. However, I thought I'd inquire if you needed some sustenance. <laughs> Aiden did not just say sustenance. Oh my god, thank you for the follow! Oh my god, thank you. Thank you for the follow. Father, I require sustenance. You're right, Raj. He is sus. Denence. What? Like, lunch? Yes, I was thinking of bringing you a pot pie from the culinary table. They had some extras. Can we even have food in the library? There are no rules outright prohibiting it, provided we do not make a mess or make excessive noise. Right, well then, sure, I'd love a pot pie. Capital. I'll be there shortly. Is there a reason you couldn't text this to me? I'm holding two textbooks as we speak, equal, as well as walking. I can't very well see where I'm going if I'm texting now, can I? I suppose not. Anyway, I must hang up now if I intend to hold the pies. We'll speak again shortly. See you soon. I hang up the phone and began waiting for Aiden to arrive. I idly glance around to look at some of the paintings on the walls. There's actually a lot of interesting pieces hanging on top of the shelves, although I'm uncertain if they were done by students or not. I'm admiring a particular piece depicting two wolves in ancient Roman in Roman attire when I hear Aiden's voice. You certainly didn't make yourself very easy to find, tucked away in a corner. Sorry, I ended up over here when you called. I got some looks because my phone wasn't on silent. I see. Well, I brought the pies as well as some of the books that look like they'd be good as reference material. In his hands, he holds a plastic bag and two giant books that look to be at least a thousand page pages each. It hadn't even occurred to me that books could get this thick without being a dictionary or encyclopedia. <laughs> Before we get started, though, we should eat these pies while they are still warm. Following Aiden over to the nearest table, he sets the two large books down and pulls out two pies from the plastic bag. Bon appetit. 
Thank you, Aiden. I appreciate it. And it smells really good. I would hope so. The work done by the Culinary Club has never let me down. I've considered asking Owen if he would want to work as a member of my kitchen staff. You have a kitchen staff? Wait, who's Owen? Owen is a feline who was running the line a few days ago, though I understand if you don't remember him. He tends to not leave a very strong impression, and he's tougher to recognize when he's not wearing the uniform. Additionally, to answer your other question, yes, I do have a kitchen staff. However, at the moment, the only members of the staff I have with me are Jericho and Manny. Jericho and Manny? My bodyguard and my butler, respectively. They've been employed by my family for all of my life. What? How come I've never seen an either of these people? Shouldn't this Jericho be with you 24-7? He's only with me when I'm conducting business or at home. His presence on campus would make people uncomfortable. Manny never leaves the house except to drive me to my appointments. So, wait. You have a male nanny named Manny. While he has functioned as a nanny for me, Manny's main job title is that of Assistant Chief Butler. Assistant Chief... How big is your family staff, exactly? Well, spread across the three estates, probably about... 200, give or take? I've never really taken the time to really count them all out. Right. Conversations like this really make me feel like Aiden and I come from completely different worlds. I wonder how he even relates to people his own age when a silver spoon falls out of his mouth whenever he talks. Is everything alright? Uh? It's just, I can feel your frustration. I thought perhaps we could discuss it rather than let it fester. Oh, uh, shit, how do I say this without hurting his feelings? Damn these empathic, borderline, mind-reading powers of his! And now you're panicking. Just calm down and talk to me. I promise it'll be fine. Right, I, uh, look, don't take this the wrong way, but sometimes the things you say go a bit over my head. What do you mean? Well, whenever you're talking about having, like, investments or business appointments or a freaking butler, I don't know how to respond to any of that because it's so beyond me. If I'm being honest, it also makes you come across as a little pretentious. I take a deep breath after finishing dropping all of that on him. There's no doubt he hates me now. I pretty much just spent a minute insulting him. I see. I think I understand. My economic background brings you discomfort and thus drives a gap between us. This wasn't my intention, and if it will help bridge that gap, I'll try to refrain from discussing such matters in your company. Although I will admit, I'm at a bit of a loss at what, what else we might discuss, but I was sharing into some details of my personal life. You still can, just tell me more about you. I'm afraid I don't follow. Well, like, what's your favorite movie? It's been a while since I've gone to any sort of cinema. I suppose I rather enjoyed Dandelion 2. Isn't that a kid's movie? Yes, well, I was a child when I watched it. Okay, anything more recent you might have seen? More recent than Dandelion 2? What? <laughs> this bitch! Take his ass to a Dollar General! Take his ass to a fucking Dollar Tree! Take his ass to Walmart! Have... Have you not been to the movies since? I've been rather busy as of late. That movie came out over a decade ago. Well, I've been rather busy over the last decade. Jeez, this whole business air thing really is your whole life, isn't it? It really is. I've grown up my whole life working towards it, and it's all I've ever wanted. Well, then a jetpack when I was six, I've convinced myself that I'd make a push for the tech industry to look into the technology. I grew out of that, though. That's true, jetpacks might be a little silly. Oh, don't get me wrong, with enough research, I'm confident we could develop them. It just became clear that I'd likely never be able to use one. Why's that? I struggle to maintain my composure at higher altitudes. You're... afraid of heights? No, don't be ridiculous. I just find great discomfort in not having my feet properly placed on the ground. So you're afraid of flying? I frequently struggle with the experience, yes. It's a perfectly rational fear. After all, in the event of a major malfunction or hijacking, death is nearly certain. When was the last time you were on an airplane? Aiden shifts uncomfortably while poking at his pot pie, twirling the goopy contents around in a little tinfoil pan. It was about 
three years ago. It went well. Mostly. Once I was sedated. What? Fucker used crank darts on him? God damn! They sedated you? It was perfectly reasonable. I wasn't allowing myself to be restrained. Anyway, that's enough personal discussion. We came to find good reference material for our projects. Have you chosen a constellation yet? Not yet. I was thinking I'd just choose one of the more common ones, like the Big Dipper. I suppose that's one approach. Though you may find the instructor will be more impressed if you make a less common choice. For example, I intend to use Cepheus for my project. Cepheus, Cepheus, Cepheus. Aiden enters an impossibly boring monologue about the subject of his project. I try giving him my attention, but I feel my brain shutting down due to a lack of stimulation. Probably horse tranquilizers. I'm boring you, aren't I? What? No! No! I'm very interested and capricious. Cepheus. It's fine. I've been told my explanations can be a bit dry at times. Instead of listening to me drone on, how about we hit the books instead? Sounds like a good idea. Aiden grabs one of the two books in front of us and cracks it open, his eyes scanning the pages intently. I follow suit and grab the other book. Opening it, I find myself staring at the tiniest font I've ever seen. This seems like it might take a while. How do you suppose I find anything relevant? I start at the table of contents. From there, I suggest using your eyes to read the text and take note, in, note of info you might use. Was that sarcasm at the end there? Please, Mason, we can't spend all of our time talking. Right, sorry. I should have known the second we got started, Aiden would be all work, no play. I'm sure we'll be more open to small talk after a bit of work. Hopefully I can find a moment to talk about the Jude situation. Somewhere between an hour and an eternity passes us by in complete silence. I actually surprised myself and I found a couple of interesting notes on Pavo, the Peacock constellation. Yet there hasn't been a single chance to talk to Aiden about Jude. Shouldn't he be able to feel my burning desire to discuss this with him? Maybe he did notice and he simply ignored it. I see Quinn is putting the phone I got him to good use. Congrats, Quinn. Wait, you got him a new phone? Of course, it's inconvenient for all of us if he's without one, and it would take him quite a while to replace it on his own. I'd do the same for any of the others. This is my chance, even Jude. I suppose, even Jude. Although, this presumes he would accept the gift. Have you spoken to him at all since yesterday? No. We haven't crossed paths since, and it's not like he'd answer my calls regardless. I discussed the matter with Zoe, and she intends to talk with Jude on my behalf. That's not really a solution, though, is it? Wouldn't it be better just talk through your issues? Like adults? Like I'd never thought of that. The problem is that Jude doesn't care to listen to me. I'll, apparently, I have a tendency to lecture him. I try to be civil, but it still ends with him often yelling in my face. I'll admit it has been a while, but this will pass like so many other things before it. But what about... Aiden stops me holding his hand up while he reads something off his phone. I hear a distinct click of his tongue before he turns back towards me. My apologies, Mason, but I'm afraid I must cut our time together short. There is a small business emergency I must attend to. Girl, I can business. Business, business, business. Numbers. Uh. Uh, sophisticated. One plus one is two. Uh. Uh, 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 CEO, <laughs> table of contents, uh, Microsoft Office, see, I can business Aiden. <laughs> oh fuck it crashed
Oh shit! My dreams of being the wolf on Wall Street, the Wolf of Wall Street, have gone down. At theta <laughs> underscore dot. Great <laughs> job, sweetie. You're learning words. I I don't know whether to be whether to laugh my ass off or be insulted. Oh, that sounds important. I guess we can talk about this later. I'm glad you're being understanding about it. I'll message you later tonight in regards to our weekend plans with Zoe. Weekend plans? Sell chat to pay for the bills. <laughs> Camping, remember? We discussed going this weekend. Right, sorry, I've just had a lot on my mind. I spaced out for a minute. Aiden regards me with a look of concern before being pulled away by the buzzing of his phone. He looks at his phone, then back at me before shaking his head in frustration. Aiden grabs the books he'd brought and walks out of the library while simultaneously taking his phone call. Watching him leave, I'm left to wonder how often he bounces between school and work like this without a break. I feel like I would be completely stressed out if I was constantly on the go like that. Looking at the time and with nothing keeping me here, I decide to return to my room. Speedrun! Mason! Zoe! Ah! Oh god, it's Greg! Ugh. Yuck. <laughs> Learning so many words. Musty ass bitch, disgusting ass bitch. It's Aiden. I wonder what he wants. Good evening, Mason. Zoe just informed me of additional participants in our weekend. Were you aware of this? She told me earlier this afternoon. It was shortly after we met at the library. I see. I'm concerned she's intending to twist this trip into some vacation. We're getting pictures of the stars for our projects. That's it. Okay, bye. Ah! Have fun. Ah, fuck. Fucking desk table thing. Ah! You f <laughs> What is he talking about appropriate attire? Are we going hiking in the mountains? Understood. Then I'll wish you a good night. Until tomorrow, then. The Boy Scout drip. Aiden does not slay. Okay. How are we waking up Quinn? We're just going to be holding down control for the entirety of stream, basically. We're, we're, we're doing Aiden's entire fucking route tonight. Yeet him off the bed. Ah, shit. Hit the wrong one. And we're going to try to convince him to go. You know what? I'll be glad to go, but I'll have to stop at the cafeteria with me before we get there. That's it? Yep, that's it. Zoe had said some interesting things about the dining facility here that made it seem like I should be staying away from there. Alright, sure, we can stop by before class. Well then, just give me a few minutes and I'll be ready. Let's hurry inside so we aren't late. It's convenient that the cafeteria just happens to be along the same way we'd take to get to our English class. Here's hoping that stopping in here doesn't take too long. Oh, God! Ah, fuck, fuck! Uh, okay, okay, okay. Now we need to decide what our poison is. <laughs> we had, we had the quote on... Ah, shit! We had, you know what, banana pizza. Server hands me a tray with a slice of banana topped pizza along with two dipping sauces. 
the look and smell of both of the liquids, I was likely given ranch dressing and soy sauce. You are going to hell for that. A lunch lady? You, you are going to hell for that. You are going to hell. And they will have to dig deeper just to hold you. Satan fears you. Satan will see you and dig a hole screaming bloody murder out of fear from the poison that you have concocted. This place is like a parallel world where all common food laws, food laws go to die. Crying my eye. Yeah. I gaze down at the slice of pizza before me and I find myself utterly puzzled. I'd heard of pineapple on pizza, which is already controversial, but banana slices? The scent has a sickeningly sweet overcoat atop the familiar smell of tomato sauce, grease, and cheese. Dear Lord God, I am sorry. I am sorry for all sins that I've committed. You know what? We, we gotta eat it. We gotta eat it. And we fucking died. Uh, congrats. Speed run. Ah! Nutrition. Ah! Front or back? Nutrition. Yum. Fucking dies. You, you just gotta love dying. Just fucking died. R.I.P. Mason. You will be missed. Girl should have done the Fortnite dance before eating. Then he would have survived. He should have. He should have chug jugged. Take me to your Xbox to play Fortnite two. Oh God damn it. Uh. Take me to New York. I'd love to see LA. I really want to sit on the front. Gay rights. Writing about gay rights. Okay, are we starting a conversation? Texting Aiden or staring? Uh, we got, we got a, we got a text Aiden. I fucking love Estelle. I love her. I've only listened to like two songs, and I know her as fucking Garnet from Steven Universe. But I fucking, I fucking. The music that I have heard from her is amazing. We got we got to go to the camp with Elliot, I think. Like Oh god. Oh god. Fucking Aiden. There was lightning to remove the blue shelf. We're going to talk to Aiden. Leaving Zoe to help Elliot unpack, I start heading towards the lone wolf staring out at the empty sky. The hair continues slightly flowing with the wind. I'd almost think he looked majestic like this if not for his ridiculous clothes. Hey. Can I help you? No, but hopefully I can help you. Aiden scoffs at this, shaking his head and pacing back and forth before turning towards me. How exactly were you expecting to help me? I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere with someone who can't stand me. You could always leave. No, I came out here to get pictures for the assignment. Besides, if I left, I'd never hear the end of it. No, I'll have to confront this directly. Aiden begins pacing again, and I feel a slight itch on the back of my neck. Turning around, I find Jericho standing near a tree, his eyes alert as if studying me. Is he going to keep staring at me? Jerry, knock it off. You're causing him discomfort. The large bovine begins moving away from the tree line and towards Aiden and me. Yes, sir. Really? Calling me sir? I told you, when we're not at work, just call me Aiden. But this is my work. Okay, yes, but this is more leisure than business at this point. Besides, it's not as if my father would... Oh, you ass! Wait, no, I gotta do that. Oh, you ass! Aiden punches Jericho on the shoulder, who doesn't even slightly budge. I wondered when you'd catch on. Well, 
a formal introduction. Well, a formal introduction. This Jericho, this is Mason. Mason, this is my guardian of sorts, Jericho. Interesting, so this is the Mason I've been hearing about. Jericho takes a step forward and seemingly starts sizing me up, looking up and down in a seemingly exaggerated motion. I thought he'd be taller. And I thought you wouldn't be a bitch! Uh, nice to meet you too. Anyway, go take a walk, Jerry. I don't need you keeping watch right now. Alright, boss, but if you need anything, just holler. Holler! The large bull takes another step towards me, glaring at me from above. I'm always just a shout away. Jericho then pulls out a pack of cigarettes and proceeds on his leave, leaving the two of us alone. Sorry about him, he can be overprotective. Yeah. Not to mention that he can be absolutely terrifying. That dude looked like he was about to crush me with his, with his thumb. So, scary bodyguards aside, can I ask why you're wearing that? I point at Aiden's absurd outfit, hoping this will be a lighter conversation that might brighten his mood. If nothing else, it'll answer a question that I've had all day. It's proper camping attire. I did excessive research on the proper wear for camping, and I found this. It's the most practical garb, both light and sturdy, with heavy, with high breathability and movement. Okay, but what about how it looks? Yes, I'm aware the scarf might be a bit much, but I'm actually rather fond of it. What? What the fuck? How how do you delete messages? How do you delete chat? What the fuck? He has no idea how absurd that whole getup looks. He looks like he came out of a scout magazine from the 70s. That's not what I... Anyways, what's the plan with Jude then? I don't know. I can just do what the others want. Tuck my tail between my legs and apologize. But... But I'm not sorry! I tried to help Jude's mother get a job so that Jude could have more freedom. He shouldn't feel obligated to take care of her just because she doesn't have her life together. I just thought if I'd done that, I'd be doing my part for this group. I help Elliot with his business, I help Quinn with school, and whatever he needs a replacement phone. Jude rejects anything I try to offer him. I don't know what he wants. Looking at Aiden with his ears folded back, it becomes clear that he really is just trying to help. He actually believes in trying to help the others, just like Zoe keeps talking about, although... I'm not sure what he gets out of it. Oh, hiya. Welcome. Ah! Look, Mason, I appreciate your trying to mediate. I'll be fine. I just need to figure out how I'm going to handle this. If you don't mind, I think I need some time by myself. I'll rejoin you and the others when I'm ready. Of course. I'll give you some space. Aiden turns back to the sky, looking towards the lowering sun. I find myself resisting an urge to give him a hug and smack him on the back of the head at the same time. Instead, I reach the conclusion that it's better to just give him space like he wants. No! No! That is not better! No! Hang on. It's not being a buzzkill. Just... You know what, I'm gonna take a minute to get my shit together.
Okay. It should be good. Should be good now. Walking back into the camp, I'm greeted by Zoe and Elliot who have finished setting things up. Looking over, I can see Jude and Quinn have also found their way back. Jude is sitting against a tree still brooding while Quinn sits next to him chattering away. Hey Mason, how is he holding up? It's a bit tough to say, but I think you'll come around. I'm saying this to her, but really, I don't know Aiden well enough to say that with certainty. I suppose it's more of an optimistic hope than anything else. Great, then if you got a few minutes, we should go and have a quick chat. Yeah? I need to stretch my legs a bit, and I feel like you've got some questions for me that have been burning in your pocket. Zoe grabs my arm and begins pulling me to the side. She did say we'd talk later, I just didn't think it'd be so quickly. Because what you're saying is fucked up, Amethyst. That- that's all it is. Didn't you find that information when we were at the library? No, at least I don't think so. I guess I could have just missed it. If I can't see it, how the hell am I supposed to get a picture of it? We obviously gotta talk with Aiden. Move towards Aiden's tent to see if he wants to talk, and I bump into him as he, just as he opens the flap and opens the flaps to walk out. Oh, I didn't expect you there. Did you need something? No, not really. I figured we could chat if you're not busy. Well, I'm not particularly occupied with anything right now. What did you want to talk about? Shit, I actually didn't think about what I was going to talk to him about. I'm not sure why I always seem to do this. I jump into these conversations without any idea of what I'm going to say. Uh, did you get your pictures? I will. Once the stationary cameras gets the shots I'm after. Why leave it up to my shaky hands when an automated process can do it better? Shaky hands, huh? And here I thought you were cool, calm, and collected. Though it looks like you're doing good. I have expected you would burst into flames at the idea of staying out in the woods. Oh, I'm hurt. I may have refined taste, but that doesn't mean I'm incapable of roughing it out for a weekend. Aiden holds his hand to his chest and his face takes on a mock hurt expression. You certainly seem to hate the idea when Zoe brought it up. Right? I may not have loved the idea, but only because it's an environment I'm not overly familiar with. Naturally, though, I made sure to come prepared and did plenty of research. What kind of research did you do exactly? Well, I studied how to make a fire without tools, as well as the most efficient outfit for a multitude of environments. Clearly, his reading did not cover the social environment. Jude's been holding back laughter every time the deer has looked at him. Is something funny? What? No, no, not at all. I was just... So, uh, can I expect to see more of Jericho whenever I'm around you? Why? Are you interested in him as, or something? What? No! Because I wouldn't blame you if you were. He has a well-crafted physique. I mean, I won't say he's wrong. He's definitely jacked in a way that's appealing. Yet at the same time, it's unnerving. Looking at him doesn't give me warm fuzzies like the others in the group. Rather, it gives me a weird, itchy feeling. Is everything okay? Oh, hiya. Uh, huh? Oh, yeah, no, I'm just thinking. What about? Well, I certainly can't tell Aiden that his bodyguard gives me serial killer vibes, but with his invasive empathetic powers, I'm sure he knows something is wrong. I guess I could just mention something else that's bothering me and that should work. I guess I just can't seem to figure you out. What do you mean? I keep flip-flopping in my mind. Sometimes you seem like this genuinely nice, if not a bit misguided guy. Other times you seem to be this obstinate ass whose empathy skills are ironically lacking. You're just, you're hard to read sometimes. Aiden looks taken aback by what I said as if it had never occurred to him that he wasn't easy for me to understand. I suppose that's fair. I mean, we only met recently, but I'd like to think most people are hard to fully understand. I'd be more concerned if you had me all figured out in less than a week of knowing me. I'm still trying to get to know you two and to get used to the idea of you joining us all moving forward. So, just don't write me off until we've gotten to really know one another. Aiden places his hand on my shoulder and gives it a gentle squeeze, looking at me with these big eyes of his. He really is hard to figure out, but I guess they all are in their own way. The topic between us switches to college, and I find myself tuning out a lot of the business jargon he spews out. Aiden also inquires how classes are going for me, and he briefly berates me for putting off my essay until Sunday. Girl... No. 
we don't want to drink because it tastes like ass. And now we're playing Truth or Dare. Aiden or Zoe? Yeah. God, if I were a mod, I could one time you out or two ban you cause amethyst. I'm sorry, but you really need to chill the fuck out. Truth. You're nope, 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 nope. No, 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 dare. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the uh, sensor. We're, we're speed running. I can't. I'll get banned. The discussion with Aiden makes me uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable. I'm here for a good time. It's the same one. It's the same one. Elliot, Jude, or Quinn? Yeah, it is. Normally I wouldn't give a shit, but... conversation makes me uncomfortable. Okay, are we raising our hand or not raising our hand? That's what we're doing. Well, we're going to continue after the ad. Want to break from the ads? They're going to raise our hand, though. Oh, whoa. Okay, it's Aiden. Huh, you know, I didn't expect that, but I think I can see it. I wonder if you'll be the first to actually bust through those bust past those dumb walls he puts up. What do you mean, hey? We don't mind our underwear minimum. God damn it, cats. Yeah. Jude and Quinn, you'll share a tent while Aiden and Mason share the other tent. I'll be bunking with Elliot. Does that sound good to everyone? Zoe looks at me and gives me a wink. She totally split this up, split this up so I, that I'd be sharing a tent with Aiden. Yeah, we, we should be good now. We should be good now. We're just going to finish this tonight. She's so manipulative, but what does she think is going to happen? We're surrounded by her friends, and it's not like we do anything. I don't even know if Aiden feels that way towards me. Or anyone. I do my best to brush these thoughts out of my mind. It's not important to think about these right now. Hello, Mason. I hope you don't mind sharing a tent with me. What? Not at all. It's totally fine. Uh, those are lyrics. Splendid. I'll be setting up my sleeping bag then, and I'll be sure to leave plenty of space for yours as well. Yeah, thank- 
Sleeping bag? Did I? I don't think I packed one of those. Why would I pack a sleeping bag? It's clearly an essential. What was I planning? To sleep on the ground and make a pill out of rocks? Mason? Mason! Aiden shouts at me by pulling me out. Aiden shouts at me, pulling out of my pulling me out of my brief stupor. His face is one of concern. I feel your distress. Is something wrong? Is it me? I can request to switch with someone. No, no, it's not that. I just realized I forgot to pack a sleeping bag. Oh. Oh? That's all you've got to say? So you're worried about having to sleep on the ground. Then just take my sleeping bag. Huh? But don't you need it? Hardly. I can't imagine I would have gotten a good night's rest anyway. I'll just stay up and organize my plans for next week. This guy, all he ever does is plan, work, and give. He's never relaxing. That's no good. Huh? I said that's not going to work. You need rest just as much as anyone. What if we shared your sleeping bag? It looks rather big. If I'm being honest, looking at the thick silk and large pillow, it looks more like a bed than the one in my dorm room. Wouldn't that make you uncomfortable? Maybe, but I'm willing to try it if you are. Aiden ponders this for a moment, and it's in this moment that I realize how crazy I must sound. I basically just asked him to spoon with me until morning. That wasn't my intention, but that's definitely what would happen if he agreed. He's probably going to debate me further, though. No need to panic. All right, that seems reasonable enough. Wait, what? Aiden begins opening a sleeping bag, but I feel the need to interject. Shouldn't you, I don't know, put on pants or something? I thought you might be comforted if I were to join you in being exposed like this. With that discussion out of the way, and without further objections, I snuggle up into the bag, facing towards Aiden. This feels so out of character. I mean, sure, it's a practical solution, but I never thought he'd actually agree to it. I wasn't even thinking when I'd said it, but now we're laying next to each other like this. Aiden looks at me curiously before turning his back to me. Looking at him up close like this, his fur is so soft. It always looks soft and shiny, but now I can really see that he keeps it pristine. He makes... He still smells of the lake water. Mossy. Yet, I can still faintly smell his cologne. A distinct vanilla. Um, Mason? Yeah? Your hands are little... Thinking about what he's saying, I realized that by having my hands downward, I'd been practically feeling up his ass. Once I'd realized this, I couldn't not notice how firm his cheeks are. I almost want to give them a squeeze. What the hell am I thinking? Cleaning my mind from the gutter, I yanked my hands away from the wolf and shifted them behind me. Sorry about that. It's fine. Aiden doesn't say anything else, and we both just lay there silently. I almost feel like I should say something, yet nothing comes to mind. I wonder if I made him uncomfortable, or maybe he's already fallen asleep. I can't really tell with his eyes closed. I try my best to clear my mind. I try not to think about anything and let myself drift away. I, it really did feel nice. His fucking ass. They say all work and no play makes you a dull boy, and Aiden is no exception. I look forward to seeing the mess he becomes when his world crashes around him. Ah, shit, can Mason see the future? Pushing these thoughts out of my mind for a moment, I allow myself to shift in the silk sleeping bag and soak in the comfort of the high-quality material. I wonder, does Aiden always sleep in, sleep in such fine bedding? Wait. With this passing thought, it occurs to me that there's a posh wolf missing from my sleeping bag. Looking around the tent, it would appear Aiden has stepped out. How late did I sleep in? Quickly stumbling my feet, I take a peek outside. Not seeing any of the others, I make a quick beeline for the clothes I'd hung up last night. Zero trust. They're still a little damp, but I can at least wear them now and cover myself properly. Feeling the slight wet cloth lightly clinging to my fur is far from comfortable, but it's that or going borderline nude the entire morning. After getting my pants and shirt on, I notice our local bodyguard watching me from the edge of some trees. Feeling a little bold, or perhaps just tired from that tired of that feeling I seem to get whenever I know he's watching me, I decide to approach the bull. Were you watching me, or where's Aiden? Where would a wolf go to McDonald's? Oh, sorry, the ice cream machine is broken. Sorry, cats, the ice cream machine's broken. Where's Aiden? If you're looking for him, just head on over down this path. He went over there to make a phone call a little while ago. Gotcha, did he wake you up, or are you always up this early? He and I are on pretty identical sleep schedules, so I won't lie, I've been taking advantage of this trip to get extra hours in. This man is so confusing to me. Sometimes he seems very serious about his work, and at other times it almost seems like it's a joke. No ice cream. That always pisses me off about fucking McDonald's. Like, you go over there and you're like, hey, can I get an ice cream? And they're like, sorry, the ice cream machine's broken. And it's like, bullshit. Bullshit, the ice cream machine is broken. You just don't fucking clean it or some shit like that. Because I don't think they're allowed Why is the sensor to... still up? Because I don't know if Aiden is booty butt naked or not. 
It's a little bit of both, actually. Shit, that's right. He knows exactly what I'm thinking. You bet I know what you're thinking. Okay, this is getting on my nerves. I have to exit this conversation and find Aiden. Rushing past the bull, I head further into the woods. It was both to look for Aiden as well as to get away from Jericho's mind reading. After the dream last night, I think I might be coming to the realization that I hate yet you have anyone poking around in my thoughts. It only takes a couple of minutes of trekking through some bushes and trees to find the wolf I'd been seeking. Aiden is pacing back and forth while still wearing a scout uniform. His expression and voice are both very stern while he talks on his phone. And there we go. What I'm trying to understand is where this idea of selling came from. No, no, I know that. Yes, I was just led to believe that when the time came. Right, well, give me a chance to make a counter case before you make any decisions. I'm not sure who he's talking to. Probably a client of some sort. Based on his tr tail thrashing about and his ears swiveling, I'm assuming he's not happy with how his discussion is going. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes, I will. Goodbye. Aiden's call ends. At first, he doesn't move an inch. He simply slides his phone into his shorts while letting out a long sigh. However, he seems to take notice of my presence after the moment passes and begins to slowly walk towards me. Mason, how long have you been there? Not very long. Aiden looks at me carefully, no doubt determining if I'm telling the truth or not. I see, and how much of that did you hear? I really only heard the end of the conversation, honestly. It sounds like your sale wasn't going very well. My sale? Oh, yes, I suppose you could say that. What about you? You seem troubled. Is everything all right? Is everything all right? I don't really know how to answer that right now. I'm really unsure of what to make of that dream. I could tell Aiden, but would he take me seriously? Are we going to tell him or not? Gay baby jail! Ah! Ow, my fucking arm! about Dante from Devil May Cry. I haven't played that game, actually. I just had a really weird dream. At least, I think it was a dream. Aiden listens to me with rapt attention as I regale the story of the strange happenings in the night. At no point does he interrupt me. He simply nods along as I explain everything to him as best as I can. Once I finish, his head shakes a bit as he thinks about how to respond to my story. I wouldn't worry about all of that too much. It sounds like... It sounds a lot like an anxiety dream. No, but I really don't think it was a dream. It all felt so real. You wouldn't be the first to have an overactive imagination. It's likely your anxieties have manifested in this way, and that's perfectly normal. Aiden reaches his hand out and pats my head, ruffling the fur between my ears and flashes me a warm smile. While the gesture is nice, it isn't exactly reassuring either. Maybe he's right. Perhaps it really was just a weird dream. Oh, I also ran into Jericho just now on my way here, and he did a bit of mind reading. I see, and based on your tone, I presume that made you uncomfortable. Allow me to apologize on his behalf. He has a way of being intrusive in the worst possible way. I assume you're speaking from experience. Let's just say he has a tendency to stretch the definition of his duties to suit his own wants. If I were my father, I'd have likely fired Jericho a long time ago for a lack of professionalism. However, he's my oldest friend, so I could never force myself to do that. So working at Aiden Corp has a lot of job security. That's good to know. You know that the company isn't called Aiden Corp, right? I know, but it just rolls off the tongue better, don't you think? Aiden cracks a smile at this as I hold back a chuckle. The tension between us seems to evaporate as we move away from this topic of conversation. I'll admit, I expected you to sleep a while longer. I was actually about to go on a walk, if you'd like to join me. I don't have anything really stopping me, so that sounds nice. Following Aiden's lead, I began walking along one of the paths that leads towards the lake. The sun begins rising further beyond the mountainous horizon, and rays of light begin pouring through the trees. During this time, Aiden and I don't really talk, and said we simply enjoy the moment and sights around us. Our forest walk comes to an end when the trees break, giving us a beautiful view of the lake bathed in sunshine. Truly is a marvelous sight, seeing the glistening surface dancing with each little ripple. Wow, you could just look at all of that. Would you just look at all of that? I'll admit the view is rather not. I'll admit the view is rather nice. I turn to Aiden as I quickly shift away, as if trying to look elsewhere. Was he looking at me just now? No, that was probably just my imagination. I didn't think you were one to really enjoy this kind of thing. I don't have time for it generally, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy it. When Zoe had mentioned camping originally, I'd imagined a much dirtier environment. This area is surprisingly well maintained. The water is surprisingly absent of waste, and I haven't noticed much in the way of trash on the ground. I never realized you were such, an, such a big environment buff. Walkies! Ah! I just think it's a shame that nobody seems to be forward-thinking. It's why I want to make a big push for developing technology that assists in a cleaner energy production. My father disagrees, though. His mind has always been on the numbers. He saw the initial projected dip in profits and immediately wrote it off as a foolish venture. 
He doesn't believe we could secure enough patents with that technology that would exceed our gains long term. Seems like Aiden has really thought about this idea a lot. I can see how passionate he is about making this work. Isn't it risky, it's a good idea, or say nothing? Based Aiden, we love to see it. We do! We love to see Aiden. He's so iconic. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I'm glad you agree. Unfortunately, I don't have enough saying power to really make any of this happen. At least you do want to make it happen. It's not like there are a ton of people out there that are pushing for that kind of change. Thank you. However, I would be lying if I said my reasons for it were purely altruistic. Inevitably, a push is going to be made for cleaner, renewable energy. The profits would be immense, especially if we were the primary producers for the technology to support that. If I could just get my father to see that, then I really think we'd be well set for the future. I'm probably boring you with all this work talk, though. Would you like to talk about something else? You're not boring me, but if you have something else in mind, I'd be fine with talking about it. Aiden purses his lips briefly while he visibly contemplates what to talk about next. Coupled with his little outfit and the way his tail flips back and forth on occasion, it's actually kind of cute. Though the thought then occurs to me that Aiden can feel my emotions. If I were to think about him in that way, would he be able to tell? Ah, here's an idea. Why don't you tell me more about yourself? That should hopefully balance out all of this talking about work and myself. That is a bit of a surprise. I'm not sure why, but I wasn't expecting Aiden to be interested in knowing more about me. Though perhaps I shouldn't pretend to have any idea what arouses the interest of future CEOs. Oh, sure, I guess. Was there something specific you wanted to know? Well, the other night you told us about your accident. I guess I'm just curious about your life before that. I truly don't know much about you other than you being a purveyor of sweet foods. I guess I haven't really shared too much of myself with them so far, or really any of the others outside of the weird stuff. Well, to be honest, there isn't too much to share. I grew up in a pretty normal home, just my two parents and me. Are your parents on the older side? I, uh, I don't know. I mean, they're in their 50s, so I suppose. Why do you ask? Just a simple curiosity. My father had me and my sister later in his life, when he was fully prepared for children. You have a sister? Have I not mentioned her before? I nod in the affir affirmation that this was truly news to me. She's a bit of a wild child, if I'm being honest. We don't talk much anymore. But we're getting off track again. I wanted to hear more about you, not continue reciting my own autobiography. The desire to protest is strong because I am curious about the sister, but we agreed to talk about me, so I relent and continue talking about myself. Right, well, I was on the swim team throughout high school with my best friend from middle school. Really? After last night, how quickly you ran out of that water, I had assumed you likely hated swimming. I certainly wasn't enjoying it at the moment, but I doubt many people enjoy the sensation of swimming in fully soaked clothing. No, I really loved it in school. It was a lot of fun, really. Have you kept up with it since graduating? Not as much as I would have liked. After my accident, everything became a lot harder. Physical therapy was grueling for a few months. Who knew just lying still for a couple years was so bad for your health? That must have been truly difficult. I genuinely cannot even fathom the difficulties you must have faced. Difficult doesn't even summarize it well enough. It was probably the toughest hurdle I've ever had to overcome in my life. Oh, shit. It wasn't easy, but I'm here now, and I like, and I wouldn't have met any of you without that accident, so that's a silver lining, right? I, I, I guess. That's sweet of you to say. However, I'm sure you would have preferred not spending an extended period in the hospital. Hey! The sound of Quinn's voice catches my attention, and my eyes are drawn over to the dock where we see the bunny swimming towards us. Put your pants on, Quinn! He eventually begins practically hopping after us. Water cascades off his slender frame as he exits the lake. Fully expect Quinn to be wearing bottoms of some kind, but he exits late completely in the buff. I made the right call. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Aiden's face. Quinn, for God's sake, why are you naked? Good morning to you too, Aiden, and good morning to you, Mason. You're not even going to dignify my question with an answer, are you? Nope, I went for a dip and decided this was the most comfy way to do it. I can't come up with a solid argument other than it's improper to just be naked in a place like this. Maybe Quinn is simply more free-spirited than I am. Am I psychic as well? Oh, no, I just used, uh, basic fucking thinking. Knowing when to pull up the sensor bar. See, see, see. Thanks to Saleo Tales of a New Dawn, as traumatizing as it was... 
I learned a very useful skill. Reading the situation. Maybe Quinn is simply more free-spirited than I am. Everyone was wondering where you two ran off to. Nobody knew where either of you had gone. Not even Jericho? Actually, Mason, I wasn't going to mention this, but Jericho's been tailing us this entire time. Actually, Mason, I wasn't going to mention this, but Jericho's been tailing us this entire time. What? Snapping my head back, I began scanning the tree line, the trees behind us. Sure enough, I find the bull leaning back against one, a puff of smoke veiling his visage. This guy is seriously everywhere, isn't it? Isn't he? He has to be for this job. It wouldn't be the best look if I were to somehow injure myself, and he couldn't explain how that happened. You get used to it, Mason. Honestly, you probably won't even notice Jerry most of the time. I made it clear he isn't to be on campus barring emergencies, so you're unlikely to run into him except in those rare instances. <laughs> I guess I should be comforted by that, but I can't help but feel a little unnerved by the quiet bodyguard. He seems to pop in at the most random times. Just the idea of being followed and having my mind read leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Isn't this how it always is for Aiden? How does he get any privacy with someone like this constantly around? Anyway, Elliot's got some breakfast bars up there for you two. I think I'm gonna go dry off. I was about to say, I'm surprised you decided to take another dip in the lake. What can I say? The water feels nice and there's not much else to do out here. Unless you two wanted to start up another game of truth or dare. I've had enough of that for a weekend. Perhaps even my lifetime. I thought you had fun. You were laughing by the end there. At the absolute absurdity of it all, I don't willingly participate in things designed to make a fool out of me. I can't think of a good argument for that at the moment, but I'm not sure fooling around when you're with friends can really be that bad. Quinn shakes his head in a clear display of disapproval. Aiden simply shrugs unapologetically. The three of us meander our way back to our campsite and rejoin the others who are seated around the fire pit. Jude notices us at first, or at least I assume he did, because he announces our arrival without looking up. Quinn's back, and he found the other two. Good, now I don't have to worry about either of you starving. Elliot then begins staring at the two of us intently. First, I'm confused. Is he that upset? His brow furrows, and it's then that I realize what he's doing. Soon, the two small breakfast bars float into view and stop before us. Aiden shakes his head, and I grab the packaged snack that was floating in midair. Bart's Breakfast Bowl Bar? The label depicts a lumberjack wolf with giant muscles flexing with an axe, a caption stating that it has optimal morning nutrition in every bite. It's got all of your basic nutrients in a convenient bar. I figured it'd be good for a trip like this. I didn't want to pack too much, and the rest of the food I packed were saving for a late lunch or early dinner. More like you've been snacking on it when nobody's looking. What was that? Nothing. Thank you for this. May I ask where Zoe's ran off to? She wa she walked off looking for you. I figured she'd, she'll wander back here in a little while. I see. I'll wait for her in my tent then. Please excuse me. Aiden brushes past me and then past Elliot before entering his tent leaving me outside with the others. Okay, are we going to talk with Aiden, Elliot, Jude, or Quinn? I think I'm safe. Not even Hershey's shaking my head. Exactly. I moved towards Aiden's tent to see if perhaps he wanted to talk. Uh, upon entry, I met with Aiden making a rather disgusted expression. Oh, hi, Mason. Everything alright? Truthfully, not really. I'm not exactly fond of these. Bart bars. Aiden is giving major Pearl vibes. I didn't really need to be any sort of mind reader to figure that one out. Are they really that bad? Depends on who you ask. Quinn loves them while Elliot and Jude don't seem to mind them. The only other person that seems to agree with me on this is Zoe. Regardless of how I feel, though, it's my only option for food right now, so... <laughs> I have to make do! Aiden proceeds to place the food against his mouth once more, and he audibly whimpers before biting a small morsel off of the bar. He then visibly makes a gagging motion that only further emphasizes his disgust. Can't be that bad. Carefully unwrapping the breakfast bar, I met with the scent of smoky meat as well as... Tomato and pineapple? My nose is confused, needless to say, and I look at the bar of questionable contents with both intrigue and fear. Take a cautious bite of the bar and find myself absolutely filled with regret. Eggs and spoiled pizza. I don't know why, but that's the closest similarity that comes to my mind to describe the flavor of this atrocity in my mouth. The texture is very coarse and almost feels like sandpaper inside of my mouth. How could anyone enjoy this? I'm not sure whether to be happy you hate it or not. How do you know I... Oh. Psychic. It's truly a disgusting excuse for food, yet the other guys don't seem to even mind it. 
it's what we have available to us, though, so... Bon appetit! Aiden and I continue to scarf down the terrible bars over the course of several minutes. Rather surprising nobody comes to check on us, despite the audible gagging gasps we made while trying... While trying... While trying to choking down our food! Several minutes pass by between us in near silence as we continue trying to cleanse our palates. At least it wasn't as terrible as the meals offered at the dining facility on campus. I don't know if that was enough. Perhaps I should ask Jericho to go, Jericho to go get me some digestible food. He'd go do that? If I express the importance of him doing so. In fact, let me send him a text now. There, he should be back within the hour with some bare snack items. I don't imagine Elliot will be too happy about that. Well, hopefully, unlike Honest to Jude, you can keep a secret and not tell Elliot. You want me to lie? No, I simply offer that you admit the truth in exchange for some actual food to fill your gut. While I don't love the idea of lying to Elliot, I do love the idea of eating some actual food. To keep my hunger w and with it, my hangry rage at bay, I agree to Aiden's terms. While Aiden and I chat idly waiting for Jericho, Zoe pops her head in the tent. Hey, you two. How's it going? We're both doing well, Zoe. How about- how are you? Oh, good. Just good. Was looking for you this morning, Aiden, but you up and disappeared. Yes, well, I had to make a phone call, after which Mason and I went on a walk. Why? Did you need something from me? Not particularly. I just wanted to make sure you are right. I was worried you might have been attacked by some crazed axe murderer in the woods. Somehow, I doubt a crazed axe murderer would be in these woods, and I doubt even more that they'd attack me in broad daylight. Hey, I'm just saying, you never know. Try selling that yarn to Quinn. I'm sure he'd be all over it. Before you know it, he'll be telling scary stories before the night's over. Oh, that's a good idea. Before even having the chance to protest, Zoe quickly zips out of the tent, leaving Aiden and myself with our mouths agape. A short while after that, Jericho returns with the promised food. I'm not sure how he snuck it past Ellie, but my stomach was too happy to care. Aiden then steps out from the tent once he'd finished his jerky, and I do the same. Following Aiden out of the tent, he approaches Elliot, who appears to be gathering some wood for the fire pit. Okay, are we passive or aggressive? Hang on. Yeah, are we passive or aggressive? Never split up in a horror movie, girlies. That's how you die. That's how you become the first victim. Yeah. I think Aiden is right. We should be pursuing some means of justice to keep this from happening to someone else. Exactly. If we had proof beyond Quinn's black eye, we'd have something irrefutable for legal action. I know you might think we need to take action to prevent things from getting any worse, but how do you expect Quinn will grow if you solve this issue for him? While she couldn't be further from the truth, I'm not really sure how to talk about what's been bothering me. I'm going to go ahead and create the Aiden save, so that way I can fucking fix it later. I was meeting Aiden at the library to do some preliminary research for the, astron for the astronomy project. Yes, that was hardly a date. My understanding is that a date is two individuals meeting alone over food with the intent of talking about one another. Aiden brought me food and we did talk about one another and we did meet alone. Isn't that a date based on his very own definition? Then again, I shouldn't be surprised. Aiden is very practical, and I'm probably the only one that wanted to be a date anyway. I decided to walk over to Aiden, who seems to be checking his stationary cameras. Walking over to him, I can tell by his posture and expression that he isn't necessarily pleased. I presume you're not getting the perfect picture you wanted? No, unfortunately, there's still a slight overcast, which is absolutely detrimental to the visuals. Well, once you've got some kind of weather machine, it looks like there isn't much you can do. I'm afraid you are correct. Did you want to get a few pictures? Actually, I'm feeling a bit tired, so I was thinking of shuffling off to sleep. I see. Well, I might join you then. I have nothing left on the docket this evening, and it is rare that I get the opportunity for extra sleep. He lets out a yawn, and I nod in agreement with Aiden. We both make our way towards our tent and wish the others a good night. Upon entering the tent, I'm surprised with the sight of two sleeping bags rather than one. Aiden must have sensed my confusion because he answered the question forming in my mind within seconds. I didn't want any more discomfort, so while I made Jericho go on a run into town, I had to pick up another sleeping bag. This way, we don't have to share a sleeping bag anymore. Oh. 
I won't lie, I'm a little disappointed, but I shouldn't be surprised. This is a, this adaptable preparedness seems very on brand for Aiden. Wolf cocked his head to the side, no doubt trying to piece together whatever emotion I might be emitting right now. I'm not sure I can properly identify it myself, so I don't know if you will either. That's very considerate of it. Considerate of you, thank you. You're welcome. Now, if you don't mind, I think I'm ready to get some shut eye. Uh oh. Aiden proceeds to undo the neckerchief on his camping uniform and begins preparing his sleeping bag. I take off my I take off only my shirt before crawling into the bedding set aside for me. Feels a little different without Aiden lying next to me. Let's cozy. You no, know, we definitely have gotten closer over this little trip, but it still feels like there's this distance between us. I wonder if this gap between us will close over time. My eyes grow heavy and I slowly drift to sleep with thoughts of this wolf about but flitting about in my mind, fuck. And that is Aiden Route. Why do I say it like this? Oh, hi, Rook. Game was great. And... I'm fucking tired, but you know what time it is. Time to choose the next game. I am just digging myself deeper and deeper into a hole. That is, that is all I'm doing. Digging myself deeper into a hole. I'll put Sieni on the list. A Psychic Connections. Don't you know the Psychic Connections was the friends we made along the way? I'm digging myself deeper into a hole as... No, not that. No. 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 As in a grave. I am digging my own grave. Ah, shit. Hang on, hang on. I hit the wrong button. Uh, there we go. There we go. Welcome to light mode. We finished everything in psychic connections so far what game should we play next and we're going to do a text poll i'm going to add more options and see any hmm. arches i really want to do arches at one point i really want to do arches at some point uh and because i also want to switch it up i'm throwing omori back on the list and have at it What are the next two? Omori. I really want to do that game. Either Omori or Arches is what I'm hoping to win. Either Omori or Arches. Promises to Keep. Is that an actual visual novel? Let me look that up. I refuse to do one game. You all should already know what it is. I, I refuse to do it. Oh, that looks cute. Promises to keep. Let me fix that. And. Uh. Uh, Polar Knight. Yeah, I'll toss that on there. And that is the poll. You know what to do. Vote. Ah! And, as always, stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.